Come with me to a magical place where being labeled the pork queen is a compliment, where being nice is just a way of life, and where all leaders of the free world must pass through. Welcome to Iowa. Whether you're a current Iowan, an Iowa expat, or an Iowan at heart, this show is for you. This is the Iowa Podcast. Real Iowans, real talk, no drama. From the Brady Dental Care Studio, I'm Justin Brady, and it's fall, so of course we have to talk about pumpkins here in Iowa. And to do that, I've invited Blair Lawton, Executive Director of the Anamosa Chamber of Commerce, to talk about Pumpkin Fest in Anamosa. Thanks for coming on the show, Blair. Thanks for having me, Justin. I appreciate it. So it is, uh, I mean, I have a lot of pumpkin questions. <laughs> Bring but, it on. <laughs> so, and uh, no, this will be this will be really fun. So no, I, I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, first of all, what I need to know is it, it, there. There's a special year that you guys are celebrating, right? Can you tell me a little bit about that? And before you do, I just want to remind everybody: if you like Iowa content, make sure to subscribe to the show. The Iowa Podcast is available on Spotify. It's available on Apple Podcasts. It's on iHeart. It's technically on Google Podcasts right now, but in case you missed the notification, Google Podcast will be dying. They're closing that and rolling it into YouTube or something. But uh, back to you, Blair. What's the special day? Well, this is a special year, I think. We are celebrating, Justin. It's the 30th anniversary of Anamosa being named the pumpkin capital of Iowa by the state legislature. So that is a, a big number for us. Uh, this will be technically the, the 34th year of the giant way off, but 30 years since we've been recognized as the capital of Iowa. That's awesome. Yeah. So 30, I mean, what does that even mean? The Anamosa being named the pumpkin capital by the Iowa state legislature. Do you get any special privileges with that? That is a great question. It's <laughs> definitely a, a good thing that we can bring up when we're Talking to the media for sure. It's it's always a good selling point that we can use throughout the year to kind of keep that constant drumbeat, keep that excitement going. Um, if you actually come down our main street, you'll see some of like the welcome to Anamosa flags. Several of them actually do mention it being the pumpkin capital of oh, Iowa. So, nice. <laughs> um, for me, it feels like, you know, it's it's great with a small community where you can see that there is something thriving that there has been an event that's getting bigger and better every year and it's it's great to see that you know when people think of giant pumpkins they're thinking of animosa yes yeah, so, i mean we're going to talk a lot about it because it's actually a pretty big event I, I i'd never heard of pumpkin fest sadly and as i looked into it it's kind it's like how many days is, is it three days is that right it is. The majority of our events happen on Saturday. So we actually have 18 events happening Saturday, <laughs> but um, we have some stuff on Thursday and Sunday too. So Thursday night, uh, this has sort of become the, um, I want to say unofficial kickoff to Pumpkin Fest, but we have what we call a pumpkin roll. We take uh, 200 pumpkins. Uh, people can purchase tickets. They get a number assigned to them. We roll down those roll those pumpkins down the biggest hill in town and uh, the top three will get some cash prizes. <laughs> so that's, that's always awesome. a kind of a good way to kick things off. Uh, as I mentioned, Saturday, ton of events throughout the day. Looking forward to kind of chatting with you more about those. And then Sunday, it, it closes up in the morning. The Rotary organizes a pancake breakfast and one of our local country clubs also organizes a four, four person best shot. So it's really a three day event. So I want to ask all about all the events that you guys are doing. But the first thing I need to ask is like, why, <laughs> why pumpkins? Like, how did this whole thing, what's the background of Pumpkin Fest? Why did the people of Anamosa suddenly decide like, hey, we're all about the pumpkin here. What's, the, what's that story? Absolutely. So our, our original organizers, Greg and Nancy Norland, had actually done this to honor their son, Ryan. Uh, that's the, the Ryan Norland giant pumpkin way off that he had died in a tragic boating accident. Uh, they had started to kind of put this together, but decided to keep it going in his name. And it's, it's really grown over the year. So when this originally started, it was just the way off. The actual celebration across town started the following year. Got it. So that this this was actually that was going to be a question: is what's the significance with Ryan Norlin? And so the whole pumpkin fest started out as just the way off in his honor, correct? Absolutely. And then it evolved into something way way bigger over the years. How when was this founded then? 
Uh, so 1989 would have been the first year of the way off. And then the actual town festival started in conjunction with that the following year. So what's the, obviously I want to talk about the event, but let's talk about the way off first then. Um, uh, like why, t- tell me a little bit about the connection with Ryan and the way off. Was he, uh, he, obviously he was very young when he passed. Was there a connection to pumpkins? Like what, what's the connection there? Yeah, basically what his father, Greg, has told me is that pumpkins was something that Ryan really loved, um, that he would grow them with his uncle. So I think that was the connection. They wanted to find something as a way to um, honor and remember Ryan by also doing something that he loved to do. Yeah, I mean, it turned into something huge. Uh, I was, we, you know, obviously before uh, before this show, I was researching it and I was like, my word, this is a big deal. There's a lot going on. Um, so I do have to ask, what is the, I mean, you weigh pumpkins, right? And then there's like an award for doing that. What's the reward and what's the record so far? Is Is there a record? There are, absolutely, there's a, a ton of awards. There's a lot of different categories. The uh, overall prize money that the Wayoff gives out is just a little bit over $20,000. So, Jeez, but there are several wow. awards going all the way from giant pumpkins going all the way down to, to field pumpkins. We also have awards for, you know, watermelons and gourds. Um, and we have had, you know, records throughout the past. We actually had a state record setting pumpkin last year uh, that weighed 2,424 pounds, <laughs> which is, is grown over the wow. years. I know I talked with Greg and Nancy the other day. I believe they told me that inaugural year, it was somewhere around 240 pounds uh, was the win. So it's grown basically tenfold over the last 34 years. Okay. So 2,424 pounds. I got to ask, how'd they get it there? They, um, yeah, they bring in, they haul in these things in on a truck. Um, And it's always interesting. Um, So they'll be at the community center. So there's a lot of stuff that folks can come and see and check those out. I think one of my favorites is the, the top three heaviest pumpkins. We actually put on a, a big truck that Maquoketa Valley Electric Cooperative owns. And then we'll actually have those throughout the parade. They'll actually be a contingent in the parade. So I think folks always get a get a kick out of that. It's one thing, I think, to see them indoors, but it's also one thing to see the three biggest ones on a large truck driving down Main Street later in the day. Right. So there, there's a lot going on. Uh, that is actually really funny. I've always kind of, I was like 2,400. Just like, even if I had um, like big equipment and like a forklift, I don't even know how I'd lift something like that without breaking it. So that's that's actually really interesting. Uh, so this it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, de- and that's one of... Um, Oh, sorry. I was going to say that's one of the risks that the New Orleans always talk about. I think, you know, every year we hear horror stories about somebody who's got a giant pumpkin and then it, you know, falls off, uh. the, falls off the vine the week before. <laughs> so it, it can be a challenge moving those big ones. <laughs> so funny. I, I mean, there's got to be a whole science into how these things are grown, how they're managed, how they're protected. I mean, it's just crazy. You see the you see some of the big pumpkins at the fair, but I don't know. Do you hold a record over the fairgrounds then? Do you know that? So we, I mean, so we have the state record for largest pumpkin from oh, you do? Iowa. So I'm not entirely sure if they get, you know, we get a lot of enter- entries from different states. This, the pumpkin we had was a 2,401 from Piasta. I'm not entirely sure if there's been bigger ones than that at the state fair. I mean, if you hold the record for Iowa, though, that would have to count, right? Don't you beat the fair then if you hold the record for Iowa? I, I would think so. Yeah, like I'm saying, I don't know if there's people from other states that come to the state fair and have beaten oh, that. Oh, sure. Um, you know, ours is the biggest one for a you know a state grown pumpkin to happen in an event in Iowa. Well, maybe the, well, maybe we need to have a pumpkin cage match. Maybe you can have that next year, and you can uh, invite the I Iowa would, State. I would welcome the challenge. <laughs> you can welcome the Iowa State Fair people pumpkin cage match, and uh, if they have a problem with you setting the record, they can take it up with you in the cage. <laughs> so there there's a lot going on. Okay. Like I like I said um they're they're pumpkin toss pumpkin carvings uh smoking pumpkins escape rooms dunk tank car smash tons of stuff but i want to start here which is what is the this sounds absolutely fascinating and it's actually a concept i think i saw on shark tank um but it's called the boomerang equipment rodeo what is this absolutely so um boomerang 
is one of the uh, the biggest pl- employers in town. They're one of our also one of our platinum sponsors for Pumpkin Fest. Uh huh. So um, basically, we'll have them in one of the city lots. They're going to bring some of their construction equipment, and um, it's actually they actually do some cr- uh, prizes as well based on things like speed and accuracy. So this can be a a good opportunity for somebody that's maybe done it or, or maybe is an expert on it to to get behind um, of some get the behind the scenes of some of that machinery supervised absolutely but um is a good opportunity for folks to um kind of see what a little bit of get a little taste of what construction is all about now okay so what are they actually doing though are they moving because you say speed and accuracy so are they yeah sorry are they did, so they're actually yeah are they demolishing buildings or are they moving pumpkins nothing nothing that exciting <laughs> it'll be things like moving pumpkins so i think it's still a can be a good kick for some folks getting a chance to use some of the cranes and things like that, pick up a pumpkin and, and move it from one end of the lot to the other. So it's like an agility course for a backhoe kind of a thing. Yeah, it might be a good way to describe it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a communications professional, if you can't tell. <laughs> so, so they have to pick up a pumpkin without, I'm assuming they have to pick up the pumpkin with this backhoe or big, big equipment and they have to move it without breaking it. Is that like all kind of like an egg, like one of the egg races, but with a backhoe or big machine equipment? Is this kind of, am I giving a good picture here? I think you're you're starting to get a sense of it. Um, (laughs) And I'll pop this in here, a little plug for the viewers. But if you go to animosapumpkinfest.com and click on the logo for the equipment rodeo, there's actually a really cool graphic on there of a loader picking up a pumpkin that boomerang has put together for us that's super cool okay so um yeah that's that's interesting i was seeing like a concept in shark tank where this guy i don't remember what city it was but he was essentially for a fee you could rent or not rent but you could use all this big equipment move, equipment and move dirt around and people were like paying lots of money to do this so you're definitely tapping into this trend because i think there are a lot of people that like yeah, want to use something you Definitely something you're not able to do every day. Right. Yeah. There are a lot of people who want to use this big equipment. And you're, yeah, like you said, you're not, this is not a thing that you're allowed to do. You, sadly, uh, the Iowa DOT does not let you just go jump on their tractors and stuff on the highway. <laughs> and uh, I've never Agreed. tried, but I'm pretty sure it's illegal. <laughs> So it's not, not illegal at Pumpkin Fest. Um, <laughs> so what is, I, I want to know what's up with the pumpkin toss. Is this, what is this? Is this, uh, are you, they using catapults of some type or are you just like literally straight up tossing these things? What's that like? Yeah. So it's geared towards kids 12 and younger. So it really is. Yeah. People, people just tossing the pumpkins. So you can pass, uh, so you can throw the farthest. So it's kind of a, a free event typically that folks uh, 12 and younger can have. Uh, we'll have it in um, the, uh, one of the law office parking lots in town. So it's a little controlled environment, but it is a lot of fun. And we actually, um, I mentioned a little earlier about the pumpkin roll. We'll actually, uh, the surviving pumpkins from that will actually take into the pumpkin toss. Cause you have 18 events in total. And the other one I wanted to ask about is smoking pumpkins. Is this a basically a barbe- barbecue cook-off kind of thing? It is. I believe this is the second year that this has happened. So it's um, a barbecue contest in town. Um, it basically is, you know, it's, it's unfortunately not an opportunity for folks to come and taste the barbecue. Um, that's just something that, you know, that the judges are able to do. But it is still kind of a cool event to come and check out you know we've been it's been growing every year i think last i heard we had 16 uh barbecue pitmasters signed up so far so oh, it's wow. definitely something i hope we can continue to grow every year yeah that's really cool and so there's an escape room dunk tank car smash i'm assuming those are kind of self-explanatory but do do you make an escape room or is it partnered with a nearby escape room is it is it pumpkin themed <laughs> So it's actually partnered between uh, the Parks and Rec, who run the Community Center, and the Animosa Library and Learning Center. So the library actually comes down and uses some of the the rooms at the Community Center and, and builds out the escape room. It's oh, they not build like it a, out. one that's here year-round. They'll put it together just for Pumpkin Fest. Got it. And what's new this year? Like, what are the new things you've added for people that have already been there? Yeah, so we have a, a few new things. Like you mentioned, the dunk tank. That'll be the first year that we've had that. Um, the State Historical Society, they have a mobile history museum that they've been working to try to bring to every county. And so for the first time ever, they'll actually be bringing it here at Pumpkin Fest. So that'll be set up at the library on Saturday. Um, and we also have a, 
an art community an organization called Arts Court. They are putting together what they call the Temple of Doom. That'll be a haunted house at night. So those are really the three completely new additions to this year. So where do all these pumpkins come from? Because it's not like, do people have to bring their own? Are you partnered with a local grower? Um, where, where do they all come from? How many are brought in? I'm, and I, I'm curious if you have all the data on that. I don't have a lot of that data in front of me, unfortunately. Um, as far as like the pumpkins we use, for, like the pumpkin roll and pumpkin toss, we purchase those from a local grower who lives just outside of town. Um, as far as the giant pumpkins that come in, um, you know, generally we'll see pumpkins from all of the border states. Um, and there is, I mean, quite a few amount. I don't have a, a list in front of me of what the signups look like this year, but it's definitely, I'll say, for folks is that are going to be there on Saturday, the community center, as always, will be full of giant pumpkins. <laughs> so funny. I got, okay, do you also have to, I mean, this is the other big question everybody wants to know, Blair, is are you part of the cleanup crew? <laughs> is this something you have to do by yourself, or do you have a crew for that? We, thankfully, we've got a, a great committee and a great volunteer base here in Anamosa that's that's very helpful and I'm very lucky to have them. Um, so we have a group that's been, uh, we started back in November, meeting monthly. That first kind of meeting last year was more of a, a debrief of 2022, but we've been meeting monthly. And then once we got into September, we started meeting weekly. So We've got a lot of volunteers that are, are putting these events together. We've got a volunteer crew that uh, puts together a kid zone. Um, and thankfully, we have a lot of volunteers that are helping with the, the cleanup, not only at the end of the day, but throughout the day as well. want to make sure things are, are nice and clean for community members. So I want to talk a little bit about, I know that you, um, as, a, as a community, Anamosa, were working on a facade project. What's the status of that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm not completely honest on that one, to be honest. That's something that um, economic development has kind of handled the most part of it. Um, you know, we have one side of the street that did get done last year, and, and that's been nice to see. Like, these buildings are looking good. We've been able to start filling some of these empty streets downtown. Um, the, uh, the other side of the street is slated to start in 2024. Um, I think the exact date and time on that is a little bit up in the air, though. Sure. And now you're saying that it, it is attracting retailers back into these spaces? Um, I, I would say so. I'm actually um, the Chamber of Commerce. We're actually in one of the spaces that got redone. And that's that's looking great. I'm excited to be here. And what's the history of that space? Because I, I think it probably, you know, Anamosa, I think you have a town about 5,000, 6,000 people, correct? Yep. And so for those that don't know, what's the history of those spaces that you're in right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, we have multiple buildings on, on Main Street that have been here since the 1880s. Um, the one that I'm in, I have not actually heard for sure how old this building is. It's been a, you know, a number of different things has been in here the last 20 years or so from an ice cream shop to a, a pizza ranch to a, a vendor village. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are definitely some old buildings here in, in the community. And that's, that's one thing I'm excited about. I, I'm also from a very small community and I would say growing up, that unfortunately was a community that, you know, tore down a lot of our old buildings mm. rather than redoing them. And thankfully, Anamosa has been the opposite of that, that we've you know been able to keep some of this history and charm. Now, isn't now correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm going off memory. So this might be an embarrassing moment for me, Blair. But is 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 no Gra problem. Is, is Grant Wood from Anamosa or at least the nearby area? The nearby area. So he, he is, is technically his own city which is about five, five miles away. God, do you get a lot of Grant Wood tourism then? For those that don't know, Grant Wood, of course, famous Iowa artist. Yeah, we definitely do get some tourism from that. So we've got uh, the Grant Wood Art Gallery is actually just across the street from me. So that's, that's open throughout the week. Folks can come and check those out. Uh, we've got some murals around town. Uh, for a while, we did have uh, two giant Grant Wood statues. Those unfortunately aren't here anymore. Um, and then one of our newer additions in town, Porfirio's Mexican Restaurant, um, actually put up some Grant Wood inspired murals for kind of the Day of the Dead. So those are actually oh, looking cool. pretty cool as well. But there is definitely some good theming with Grant Wood around here. And you said the museum's right across the street from you? I didn't know that. Yep. And um, how many, so I'm assuming, is, is it all original Grant Wood works in the museum then? 
That is a great question. I'm not 100% on that one, to be honest. I didn't actually know that. I, I knew he was from around that area, but I didn't know you had a museum right there in downtown. That's actually kind of fascinating. So um, I, I did... I want to run some pumpkin trivia with you really quick, if you don't mind, Blair. Right. We'll test your pumpkin knowledge. And if you completely fail, that's okay. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. We'll, we'll still send people. We still want people to check out Pumpkin Fest, obviously, and head to Animosa. It does sound like a lot of fun, and I hope people check out the website because there's, a, I mean, you know, like I said earlier, there's a ton of stuff. There's even, we didn't even talk about the country club hosting, the four-person best shot, uh, car smash all sorts of stuff but 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 right now it's time for pumpkin trivia what started the popularity so okay we gotta like gotta get ready for this but uh pumpkin trivia there there are no prizes if you want prizes you have to head to the pumpkin fest but first question is what started the popularity of pumpkins and have they always been associated with fall That is a great question. I mean, I am gonna assume maybe they've been associated with fall just because that that growing season is is generally like late spring, early summer, picking the fall. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess Halloween, but I have no clue on that one to be honest. All right, and here's the next question. I'll just uh, and we're gonna add in the buzzing and uh, all that stuff. Like, no, I'm just kidding. We're totally not going oh, nice. to do that. People, great. people can look this up. People can look this up. Um, next question is, what is the worst? This is kind of something you get a. No, actually, how many species of pumpkins? So that's the next question is, how many species of pumpkins are there? Oh, I'm assuming there's a there's a ton. I'm just going to say 40. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's disputed, but there are at least 150 or more. <laughs> um, and uh, before I let you go, two questions for you and the Pumpkin Fest expertise that you have is what is the worst pumpkin food you have ever tasted? And of course, if it's someone that's like a chamber member or something, you can like not use that one. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I've ever tasted a pumpkin that wasn't good. Oh, okay. All right. We'll let it go. We'll let that slide. <laughs> and right. and at, during Pumpkin Fest, what is the most unexpected use for pumpkins you have seen? Or it could be outside of Pumpkin Fest. Ooh, unexpected use? I'm just looking through our events here really quick. Yeah, I don't know if there's an unexpected use. Um, this will be another new thing, though. We have a 5K run in the morning, so traditionally you go to a run and you might get medals if you place certain high, a certain spot high enough in your age category. Uh, this year, for the first time, we're actually going to be giving out uh, pumpkins. Oh, instead of medals or instead with? Of the, yeah, there'll be a, like a pumpkin with a, a medal included with it. So it'll be a kind of an interesting touch, something you don't necessarily see every day. Go to a, a 5K race and come home with a pumpkin. All right. So Blair, uh, Blair Lawton, executive director of the Animosa Chamber of Commerce. We're talking about Pumpkin Fest. Blair, before I let you go, tell everybody when it is and what the website is so people can register and come check it out. Absolutely. So um, it's this Saturday through, sorry, this Thursday through Sunday. The big day is Saturday, October 7th. Uh, the majority of our events are right here in downtown Anamosa. Um, I encourage people to check out the website. It's AnamosaPumpkinFest.com. We're also on Facebook at Facebook.com slash AnamosaPFest. Awesome. Blair Lawton, Executive Director of the Anamosa Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for coming on the Iowa podcast. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me, Justin. And to my fellow Iowans, Iowa expats, and Iowans at heart, thanks for listening and subscribing to the Iowa Podcast. 